by residents on the streets. 100,000 people are trapped in the city. We're getting reports of executions of very grim pictures emerging from inside Aleppo. Tens of thousands of civilians are still trapped in the ever-shrinking rebel enclave. Complete meltdown on humanity. Of just how trapped these civilians are in Aleppo. Uh, if they stay at home, they could be killed. Tens of thousands of people remain besieged, trapped in the war zone. OK, let's discuss this now in depth. I have some guests joining me. First of all, in the studio alongside me, please to welcome Alexei Kuznetsov, Deputy Head of News here at RT International. We're also joined on the, on the line by some guests. Let's go from uh, right to left. You can see there Vanessa Beely, who's an independent journalist. Also joining us, Daniel McAdams, Executive Director at the Ron Paul Institute. And uh, last but certainly not least, Brent Podovsky, columnist for the Hill. Welcome to all of you. Free exchange of opinions is, uh, is welcomed here. I want to start, if I may, with you, Brent. Uh, we've seen the solidarity being expressed there, the Eiffel Tower lights going off. Uh, there's been a lot of sentiment in the media uh, that this is a, a, a tragedy. It's been portrayed as the, the fall of Aleppo. Why are we not hearing about positives, for example, the defeat of, of terrorists, for example, al-Nusra? They're an al-Qaeda affiliate in Syria. Well, nobody wants to kill and defeat the terrorists more than I do and more than the United States. But what is happening right now at Aleppo is a moral crime against humanity. I agree with what Secretary of State John Kerry said, uh, that the Russian government should do everything to stop it, to end it, to, to support a ceasefire, to end the carnage and the killing and the misery and the bombing of innocent civilians. Uh, the United Nations is concerned about it, and I agree with their investigation about possible war crimes. I agree with what the pictures tell us in plain English. The bombing of civilians and the massacre of the innocents must stop. My strong advice to President Putin would be to follow John Kerry's advice and put an end to that carnage and killing right now. So should Assad. So should the Syrian army. It's a joke to treat them as liberators and decency. They are mass murdering civilians. And I would add the Iranians, who are allies in the killing of innocent people. This is a crime against humanity, and the whole world is watching. And there's going to be more serious talk every hour of every day about war crimes. And I agree with the Secretary of State of the United States, who wants it ended now. He is totally right. I'd like to come to you, Vanessa, get your reaction to that. We've heard the kind of a, a political view of that, a lot of talk of politicians and how they see things. As a journalist, how do you feel about that? Um, well, actually, I've just returned from three days in East Aleppo, and I would like to 100% uh, correct the lies that are being disseminated by media, think tanks, governments um, across the West, particularly your guest who's just... Um, uttered uh, complete lies. Um, I've spent basically three days in all the various liberated areas of East Aleppo, including Hanano, including the Old City, and including today. I went to uh, Jibrin, which is the area where they are receiving um, the escaped civilians um, to basically register them, to give them some form of medical treatment. Um, many of the testimonies that we receive from the civilians that um, this gentleman has just accused uh, <coughs> Russia and Syria of bombing um, actually told us that they had been incarcerated for the last four years by the United States backed various terrorist militant groups such as Nusra Front, Ar al Sham, Nur al Din Zinki, who we know beheaded the 12 year old Palestinian child, Abdullah Issa. We were told of stories of civilians who were trying to leave this imprisonment when the Russian and Syrian governments opened the humanitarian corridors. I interviewed one lady, I have her on film, where she tells me that one woman who had been kept under a condition of starvation and malnutrition by these militant factions who were stockpiling any humanitarian can I ask, can aid I ask that came one in quick question? and either selling... Can, can I ask one quick question, please? No, could you just let me finish, please? Could you just let me finish? Um, they were stockpiling the food, selling it at extortionate prices. When this lady went on her knees to beg for food, she was shot in the mouth by the militant factions that have been imprisoning these civilians for the last four and a half years, and that your media and your propaganda has supported that incarceration, torture, abuse, and, 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 and absolute 
horror that these civilians have had to go through. Okay, strong opinions. Uh, Brent, you respond. Did you, inter- did you interview any, one quick yes, I'd like to ask the lady, did you uh, interview any of the dead Syrian babies and children killed by Russian or Syrian bombs? Did you interview them? Did you take photographs of them? And do you have any moral conscience about them? Have you been to Syria? Have you interviewed the many families You're that not have answering lost my children, question. had them kidnapped, had You're them tortured, had them murdered? You're not answering my question, not surprisingly. I spoke to the <laughs> I did you spoke answer my question? To the did you see any of the dead Syrian children and babies? To. Yes. No, I didn't. Okay. No, I didn't. Because you know, what we're seeing here is... I rest my case. Can I break in a little bit? And this is a little easy for me. Gaza, I'm not having to say anything. In Pakistan okay. and in Iraq. Okay, I'd like to move things along slightly. Um, the spokesperson, we're talking about sources and credibility and who we can believe here. Can we believe the politicians say one thing? Can we believe journalists like Vanessa are on the ground? The spokesperson for the US State Department has given lots of opinions on this, and he said he hasn't seen the videos of people celebrating on the city streets, which we have been showing here on RT. Let's have a listen to what Admiral, Admiral Kirby had to say. I mean, I haven't seen every picture coming out uh, of Aleppo, but I I haven't seen, honestly say, I haven't seen any dancing in the streets. I'd like to put this to you, Brent, then. I'm sure you're probably a believer in uh, officials at the the State Department. How does Admiral Kirby know what is going on? He says that he just follows information from CNN. Oh, look, I think the whole world is watching. Uh, Admiral Kirby, I knew him when he worked for the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He's a good man. Uh, But the point is, we can witness hour by hour, day after day, dead babies by dead babies. Yeah, please let me finish. Then you can say what you like. Uh, The world is watching this. It's on. You can watch CNN, the BBC, France 24, any other television station. Well, okay, fine. Uh, the, the gentleman asked me a question. I'm giving an answer. Uh, the, the point of it is the killing, the carnage, the bombing of civilians must stop. The dead children, the dead babies is a moral outrage against humanity. Uh, I would plead with President Putin, uh, forget Assad, he's even more hopeless. Stop the killing. And I don't care how many people go on and want to say This is a good example of what's wrong the with the mainstream media. With, you have a mainstream media source like I'm not the mainstream Podowski media who goes on television telling us you've got to believe the government you got to believe the u.s government this is their same mainstream media that lied through its teeth about iraq i didn't that lied that. through its teeth about benghazi about the slaughters going on there that were not going on who are lying through their teeth right now there are no foreign media sources in east aleppo right now they are not on the ground they are all using information that they are getting through rebel sources that is the truth so badowski what you're doing right now is you're you're Can I ask one you're question? putting out fake news and you know it because there are no sources on the ground you're saying just believe the u.s government you're supposed to be in the media you're supposed to be doing in, in, in independent work okay vanessa chip in Yeah, can I just ask one question? How, um, where are these sources being able to transmit this information from? Because in East Aleppo, there is no 3G, there is no Wi-Fi, there is no electricity. So I'd like to know how these sources are able to get this information via Skype connection to organizations, uh, I'll use that term loosely, like CNN, BBC, Channel 4. I would like very much to know how they achieve it and how they're able to do that in East Aleppo. As I said, unlike the mainstream corporate media, I have been in East Aleppo for the last three days. Therefore, I'm giving you eyewitness testimony, unlike your mainstream How media about the United that is not Nations? been there what do you and relies upon spurious what, what activists do you think of the United to give Nations? them the information, like the, the White Nations Helmets. The United Nations is not on the ground there. Like the White Helmets who are... The UN are, is not on the ground there. Like the White Helmets who are funded by every single nation that has a vested and declared interest in regime change in Syria. That is your reliable source. Or perhaps the Aleppo Media Center. How about the United French Nations? Foreign are they lying funded. too? Or perhaps do you think Bilal the United Abdul Nations Karim, is lying too? A CIA agent. To, to be fair, and the uh, Brent, I think that uh, you're talking about one, one sorry, is just from Pakistan, to say, can I just one ask? is from Iraq, and the other footage is from Gaza. Yeah, just just to <laughs> add to that point, I think we've heard Brent, the, the UN human rights spokesperson, I believe it was, saying that they didn't know who were committing most of these uh, so-called atrocities, and that seems to be the crux of the problem. There isn't 
reliable information coming out, as, as Vanessa pointed out. There is no information access. There are very few correspondents. She's been there. RT as a correspondent on the ground. How can you trust the information that you're getting in the US? How can you trust that? How do you know who's a reliable source? Are you putting too much faith? Have we been doing it for many years, too much faith in news organizations? Well, as Jesus said, I have eyes that see and ears that hear the truth. And it's on all over the world, which is watching every hour of every day. Stop bombing innocent civilians. Um, CNN Stop but not answering, answering the question. The That's if you're why denying, they had Danny if you're denying Day that, on. If you're denying that that is going on, that is the biggest lie of all, with all due respect. <laughs> There, there were common standards um, of decency here. Can I just ask about you, evidence. do you, do about you remember evidence. that? Women women are the evidence from on the ground. And do you remember CNN being exposed for promoting a fake activist producing footage from inside a room <laughs> of bombing? Danny abdul Dayam, do you have any memory of that? We will let the investigations of war crimes of by independent it. observers proceed as they will. Well, okay. let the I hope, facts I hope come you, out and be Brent, revealed. Brent, I hope you can put the, uh, the, the, the ISIL terrorists on, uh, on trial as well, as, as, you, as you have mentioned. And oh, also Brent, picking, look, picking, I, up, I picking up on I one of your points, uh, if President Putin actually listened to, uh, to what Secretary Harry, Kerry has, had advised, we would have al-Nusra and, and ISIL in Damascus and not uh, uh, President Bashar al-Assad. Now, if, if, if President Putin Absolutely. had listened to I'm what Secretary right. Kerry had, had advised, more, more, more ISIS would have been killed and more children and babies would be alive. Right. Let's be fair. It's not just the U.S. government Can that's uh, taking a certain right here. Taking a certain line. Can you stop exploiting children for your propaganda? Could uh, you stop I'm sorry to interrupt you, Vanessa. I just want to... and abusing children to promote your propaganda. I just want to move this on slightly. We've heard a lot about what the US government thinks. It's not just them, though. They're in solidarity with the British Parliament. Let's hear uh, just what has been said there about how they're comparing the situation in Aleppo to elsewhere. This country, along with the entire international community, 10 years ago, embraced the responsibility to protect. <laughs> A doctrine that said that nation states, great and small, with great fanfare, will not allow the Srebrenica's, the Rwandas, and the other appalling events, including in Darfur, to take place again. Yet here we are today witnessing, complicit in what is happening to tens of thousands of Syrians in Aleppo. Daniel McAdams, I'd like to ask you the comparison there uh, made between Aleppo, Srebrenica, Darfur, a British politician clearly agreeing with uh, US political opinions. That, he must have pretty good reasons to come out with a statement that strong, mustn't he? Well, he does, but why doesn't he go back and look at who started the regime change policy for Syria? Go back to 2005 in a document from the U.S. Embassy in Damascus back to Maine State in Washington, outlining exactly how to destabilize and overthrow the Syrian government, which is exactly the roadmap they went. Who was responsible, really responsible, for the carnage in Syria? It is the interventionists in the West and their enablers in the mainstream media that push a regime change policy that destroys countries like Iraq, like Syria, like Libya, like Afghanistan, and so on and so on. They are the real perpetrators of this crime. Okay, the Aleppo has also been compared to the situation in Grozny, Chechnya. Let's have a, a clip of some media coverage. This is exactly what they want, to label all rebels as terrorists. Moscow tried this in Chechnya to mix success. Moderate separatists were targeted. Radicals committed atrocities like the Bezlan hostage crisis, allowing Moscow to pursue an only military solution against a movement they now call terrorists. Now, that again, uh, a very emotive comparison, um, comparing the situation in Aleppo to Chechnya. Terrorists tortured and killed schoolchildren in Beslan, um, trying to make out that they were moderate separatists. That, that's uh, a very powerful comparison to make, isn't it, Alexei? Well, it is. Uh, and, uh, you know, I usually don't have a habit of coming on shows. But uh, in this particular situation, I felt very motivated because um, as a young and budding journalist back in the 1990s uh, and uh, early uh, and, and later on, um, I covered both Chechnya campaigns extensively, both in 1995 and then 2000. And I can tell you that if there's any similarity between Grozny uh, and Aleppo today, uh, that's uh, the, the, the similarity is that's how the man 
mainstream media um, uh, is is covering it. And, uh, you know, they, they seem to have yanked that old playbook, dusty old playbook, off the shelf and are, are trying to use the same ploys and the same tricks that they used with Grozny. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, uh, playing down the uh, threat of, uh, uh, of international terrorism in both places, internalizing the conflict, uh, uh, deliberately highlighting the human sufferings, and uh, it's, it's basically the same story, uh, you know, all over again. It's like using the same old methods that they used in, 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 in Chechnya uh, now are being used in, uh, uh, in, in, in Syria. It's not just uh, Russian forces who have been implicated in any way. Syrian government soldiers have been accused in the Western media of killing dozens of civilians. Apparently they, they come in, they're liberating Aleppo, and then they're gunning down civilians. We don't know the motivation. The UN Human Rights spokesperson, I mentioned this earlier in our conversation, uh, uh, is, has said that it's impossible to say who is responsible. Let's just listen to that quote. Who, who is doing the, these killings? The, I can't say who's done all of them, but we, we understand at least one, one Iraqi militia is involved. Uh, we've heard of killing, killings of civilians in this way in four different locations, so it may well be different, uh, different forces involved. Uh, Alexei, this is for you because you're Deputy Head of News uh, here at RT. If you make any, any claim, but especially if it's a serious one, um, you have to, the golden rule is you attribute, you have to have sources, at least two, to back it up. We've got a, a very credible source there from the UN saying they don't know who's carrying out atrocities. So why are we seeing Western media jump to conclusions and they're doing it en masse? Well, because it's easy. It's easy because you can uh, afford to, uh, to demonize Assad, basically, uh, without actually uh, going into, uh, into details and uh, uh, relying on, on one particular source uh, you know, doesn't make you doesn't make you go to uh, you know to to all other people and collecting collecting all the viewpoints. It's uh, it's not necessary. And uh, you know, they're they're trying to build what uh, what's happening here is that they're trying to build on the old reference points that have been so craftily created uh, uh, in the past. Uh, and uh, uh, you're, you're the, you you have a situation in which. Uh, the mainstream media are carrying water for the for the politicians. That's why uh, there's no there's no second opinion. There's no alternative media. It's very convenient. Okay, let's just talk now about who army been fighting against. Some people call them rebels. Some might even call them freedom fighters. For others, they're terrorists. Uh, let's just uh, have a play a clip now of explaining who these people are. Armed groups that used to hold eastern Aleppo and its 270,000 strong population hostage aren't the best of neighbours. Many of them are internationally recognised terrorists from Jabhat al-Nusra, also known as al-Qaeda in Syria. Even the US State Department agrees. Our view on that is Nusra is al-Qaeda in Syria. They are a terrorist group. And America is aware that some other groups are willing to dismiss that fact and join forces with them all to defeat Assad. There are a couple of subgroups underneath the two designated, Daesh and, and Jabhat al-Nusra, Jaish al-Islam, Aran al-Sham particularly, who brush off and fight with that alongside these other two sometimes to fight the Assad regime. As they flee from the Syrian army, they leave shocking evidence of their presence. This is one of the methods of torture that was used by the militants. When we came here and liberated this residential block, civilians were sitting here in the prisons. We released them. They also have to leave their munitions, revealing they don't hesitate to use chemical weapons while barricaded inside a school building. That, oh, wow. Generates the highly effective poison phosphine gas. So there's two buckets full of these extremely toxic chemical. Clearly, civilians from eastern Aleppo, who these militants claim to have been protecting, aren't their biggest fans. Maybe it's because they used them as human shields and didn't allow any of them to leave the besieged area. They starved us. We suffered a lot. I cried day and night. It was a nightmare. The terrorists beat us regularly. And finally, over the past weeks, they've killed and injured hundreds of civilians in government-held parts of Aleppo, many of them children. I have another tragedy.
think the dad's name's look at it. Yet the defeat of these very terrorists is a huge tragedy, judging by the mainstream media. Okay, I hope you could hear that well. I want to come to you, Brent. Basically, that that report just assessing what our correspondents seen, as well as other sources, evidence of chemical weapons left behind, uh, ISIS flags, weapons of torture, reports of civilians used as human shields. Now, whatever their cause was originally, the way it's ended up, if you look at the evidence, as you like to to look at with your eyes and believe, it suggests that that these people are more akin to terrorists than anything else. Is that not good enough reason to stop supporting them? Well, look, first of all, for the record, uh, I oppose strongly uh, the American uh, invasion of Iraq when President George W. Bush did it uh, from the beginning, number one. Number two, uh, I took a much more aggressive position uh, to kill the ISIS terrorists and those groups uh, of terrorism than even the Obama administration has, for the record. But the fact is, there are 500,000 potential Syrian witnesses who are dead. And far too many of those potential Syrian witnesses who are dead were killed by the indiscriminate mass bombing and deliberate mass bombing of civilians. Far too many um, actually, by Russia and Syria. Actually, the majority of the casualties in Syria are the Syrian Arab army. The majority. Oh, okay. Okay, you're making it up as you go along. I'll give you credit for that. Uh, the bottom line, though, is uh, no, uh, 500,000 potential Syrian, 500, potential Syrian witnesses are dead. And can we all agree? For, for well, let me challenge you. Will you agree that if there was bombing of civilians that was deliberate by Russia or Syria, will you all agree that if that did happen, it would be a moral crime? Would you agree with that? I dare you to tell me yes or no. No, I tell you, it's exactly a silence. Who Why am I not surprised? The United Which States one of you will jump up and agree? The war criminal, because without your country's illegal intervention in a sovereign will you agree with what with I just asked you? You can't, be, you can't factions, be hypothetical when it, when when you're you talking about finish? a war and civilian this casualties. This war would not you just have cannot started. Cannot be hypothetical. We you have to stick to the facts. And the facts are 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 there. The facts are presented by our correspondent, who is on the ground. In Aleppo, I unlike rest, many other news case. agencies that claim to know I what's happening in Syria. No, I mean, it's not okay. It's not okay. I'd just like to put another question no, to it's you. It's not okay. It, exactly. It's, it's not- Fighters for others, they're terrorists. Uh, let's just uh, have a play a clip now of explaining who these people are. Armed groups that used to hold eastern Aleppo and its 270,000 strong population hostage aren't the best of neighbours. Many of them are internationally recognised terrorists from Jabhat al-Nusra, also known as al-Qaeda in Syria. Even the US State Department agrees. Our view on that is Nusra is al-Qaeda in Syria. They are a terrorist group. And America is aware that some other groups are willing to dismiss that fact and join forces with them all to defeat Assad. There are a couple of subgroups underneath the two designated, Daesh and, and Jabhat al-Nusra, Jaish al-Islam, Ar al sham particularly, who brush off and fight with that alongside these other two sometimes to fight the Assad regime. As they flee from the Syrian army, they leave shocking evidence of their presence. This is one of the methods of torture that was used by the militants. When we came here and liberated this residential block, civilians were sitting here in the prisons. We released them. They also have to leave their munitions, revealing they don't hesitate to use chemical weapons while barricaded inside a school building. Oh, wow. Generates the highly effective poison phosphine gas. There's two buckets full of these extremely toxic chemical. Clearly, civilians from eastern Aleppo, who these militants claim to have been protecting, aren't their biggest fans. Maybe it's because they used them as human shields and didn't allow any of them to leave the besieged area. They starved us. We suffered a lot. I cried day and night. It was a nightmare. The terrorists beat us regularly. And finally, over the past weeks, they've killed and injured hundreds of civilians in government-held parts of Aleppo, many of them children. I have never did the tragedy. I think 
can touch me if I get it. Yet, the defeat of these very terrorists is a huge tragedy, judging by the mainstream media. OK, I hope you could hear that well. I want to come to you, Brent. Basically, that, that report just assessing what our correspondents seen, as well as other sources. Evidence of chemical weapons left behind. Uh, ISIS flags, weapons of torture, reports of civilians used as human shields. Now, whatever their cause was originally, the way it's ended up, if you look at the evidence, as you like to, to look at with your eyes and believe, it suggests that, that these people are more akin to terrorists than anything else. Is that not good enough reason to stop supporting them? Well, look, first of all, for the record, uh, I oppose strongly uh, the American uh, invasion of Iraq when President George W. Bush did it uh, from the beginning, number one. Number two, uh, I took a much more aggressive position uh, to kill the ISIS terrorists and those groups uh, of terrorism than even the Obama administration has, for the record. But the fact is, there are 500,000 potential Syrian witnesses who are dead. And far too many of those potential Syrian witnesses who are dead <coughs> were killed by the indiscriminate mass bombing and deliberate mass bombing of civilians. Far too many um, actually, by Russia and Syria. Actually, the majority of the casualties in Syria are the Syrian Arab army. The majority. Oh, okay. Okay, you're making it up as you go along. I'll give you credit for that. Uh, the bottom line, though, is uh, no, uh, 500,000 potential, potential Syrian witnesses are dead. And can we all agree? For, for, well, let me challenge you. Will you agree that if there was bombing of civilians that was deliberate by Russia or Syria, will you all agree that if that did happen, it would be a moral crime? Would you agree with that? I dare you to tell me yes or no. No, I tell you it's exactly who Silence. is Why am I not surprised? The United Which States one of you will jump up and agree? The war criminal, because without your country's illegal intervention in a sovereign will you agree nation with what with I just asked you? You can't, be, you can't be hypothetical when it, when when will you're you talking about finish? a war and civilian this war casualties. Would not you just can't not be hypothetical. It's it's you have to stick to the facts. The facts are are there. The facts are presented by our correspondent who is on the ground. In Aleppo, I unlike rest, many other news case. agencies that claim to know I what's happening in Syria. No, I mean, it's not okay. It's not okay. I'd just like to put another question no, to it's you. it's not okay. It, exactly. It's, it's not okay. It's a war you. crime. That's exactly what I'm telling you. My other guests won't even you. denounce the bombing of civilians. Isn't that sad? Think about that, folks. They uh, won't even say it would be wrong if I it happened. I denounce any because foreign no one violence. Because no one is walking and theories here. What you're trying to suggest to us, you're trying to suggest the a theory. And We're the showing you facts. And the evisceration of children in West Aleppo. You do not talk about the children and the babies and the families that have been destroyed and devastated by you your militant factions. You won't even say the bombing of civilians they, would be wrong if it happened. Whether you call them terrorists happened. or whether you call them militants. They I'm have so ethnically cleansed entire you so areas of Syria. Brent, can I Your ask you this? sectarian arguments the failed. Of Your intervention will you agree arguments that if it have happened, failed. And now you are going into hysteria Brent, can to I ask try you this? and there, your Brent, propaganda if there been that no, has failed. If there had been no military intervention from Russia to assist Syria, where would we be now? Would, would, there, would there be al-Nusra terrorists now in Damascus? None of our other guests would even so say that if there was the bombing of civilians, it would be a crime. I think that is tragic and sad. Brent, and wait, wait a second, they wait a second. Let, let, let me ask you this. The, 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 the United States has admitted to killing civilians in Syria, both in Syria and in Iraq. What they did, they just apologized. When did you stop said, beating your wife, Brent? We're moving on. You know, would that be a crime or would that not be a crime? I are you, are you asking the same questions off the U.S. Department of State and, and uh, DOD? Oh, yes. I'll, I'll answer, I'll answer you know, my own question. I, yes. Let me finish one more sentence. Yes. If there was any bombing by can anybody, I, can I just and, and if war then crimes were investigated, it would be a crime against humanity. My answer to the question is yes. Whoever the did U it would be committing a crime. Yes, yes, yes. And I don't see one other guest defending the Russian position willing to say that. That is a shame. I rest my case.
Okay, and you made your point but very Lavrov well. But Lavrov said that we were not prepared to investigate any, the any, any the evidence, any evidence that will be presented no with facts in hand. Has their evidence been presented? It hasn't been. S I, Russian I th Foreign Prince Minister Sergei Lavrov made, made, made it very, that. very clear, and he was very specific about it, that Russia was, was absolutely ready to investigate every single complaint. They will have their chance, I promise you. Absolutely. You bet. Okay, so we'll look forward to that investigation. And I think Brent's made you. his point very, very clearly. I'd like to come to, um, to Daniel next because the, the U.S., and this is getting back more towards the cause, we're arguing now between everybody about what's happening now, but where did it all start? The U.S. has admitted itself the weapons that it, it handed to what they call moderate rebels often ended up in the wrong hands, i.e. the hands of terrorists, uh, and yet... For whatever reason, they still keep supplying them. Daniel, uh, how, how is that? Uh, how do you argue that, that you can still supply weapons when you know they're not going to the people you intend? And somehow there's no culpability on the part of the U.S. Look, even just this past week, after everything we're seeing in Syria, President Obama signed a waiver to allow more weapons, more deadly weapons, to be delivered to rebels in Syria that the U.S. knows consistently go to al-Qaeda and ISIS. If that doesn't make you morally culpable for the deaths that they create, I don't know what does. But of course, our mainstream media guest will never talk about this. Brent, can I just come to you on that? If you, uh, as we spoke about theoretical situations, in theory, if the US weren't arming the opposition, then perhaps you wouldn't have needed air support coming from Russia. Would this whole thing have just been sorted out domestically without outside interference? Yeah, Assad would have killed everybody. You mean he would have taken I, back I so his sovereign be... state? Is that what you mean? I, 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 no, no, I mean, he would have, I mean, he would have taken a dictatorship real. and made it worse. The, the, but you're, every you're, you're, one you're of our guests again, will yeah. have an opportunity. That, no, they, every one of our guests should have, and I will support their having, the opportunity to present their evidence of war crimes when it's investigated. Let them do it. And I will oppose anybody who committed war crimes. And if all of our other guests have this evidence that it was someone other than Russia and Syria, God bless them, bring the proof and accept the verdict. How about that? Fair enough? I look forward to that, but I don't expect it. Absolutely. But that brings us back to the point, though. There's a lot of accusations that have been flying around throughout this entire conflict. And yet the proof is very, very thin on the ground. Um, as I said, very grim picture of Aleppo and its liberation, which a lot of people would argue is a positive thing because the killing is coming to an end. But it's been painted very oh. negatively in the Western media. Um, let's just see the pictures, though, that we've seen on RT of locals celebrating. OK, I don't think we've got those pictures right now. Um, I, I'd like to ask you then, Brent, given it's been portrayed as a very negative thing, this is like doomsday, Armageddon for Aleppo. Yes, the buildings have gone. Yes, many, many unfortunate, innocent people have died. But what about the ones who've survived? Surely we have to believe that these people are genuinely feeling that this is a positive. They're celebrating in the streets. Or are we suggesting that they're lying? Those who survived will have a fair opportunity, I cannot wait, to testify before war crimes investigations and let their word be heard, whatever they say. I have no fear And that's, that. a, fa that's a fair point. I but want you, it. Do you accept, though, that the people who've been celebrating in the streets are genuinely pleased that the Syrian government I don't accept that in? many. I don't accept, I don't accept that many people have been celebrating in the streets, but I'll repeat, they will have their opportunity whatever their point of view, to make their views known. Unfortunately, the 500,000 almost dead, uh, far too many from the bombing deliberately of civilians by Russia and Syria will not have their opportunity to make their views known. And I wish our other guests would have more compassion and humanity and respect for the rule of international law and not be afraid to say that it would be wrong if there was a bombing of civilians. I'll say it. No matter who did it, they should all be prosecuted, whoever it is. I'd like okay, to hear our so, other guests uh, say that, excuse but me, they won't. So you've, just they won't. Said, you've just said that the Will bombing of civilians Once. is wrong. So why is your country whoever still does supplying billions of dollars worth of bombs to Saudi Arabia, who is also funding terrorism inside Syria? 
They are supplying billions of dollars of bombs to Saudi Arabia, the one of the most despotic human rights violators on this planet, to bomb civilians in Yemen. And you sit there and you hold out on a humanitarian argument, which is sheer hypocrisy. What we're seeing here is you are disgusted that your regime change objectives and agenda in Syria have failed. And they have failed because of the unity of the Syrian people. And you don't like that. You don't like seeing 75% of Syrian people in Aleppo celebrating because you've marginalized them, dehumanized them, and ignored them for the last four years. You've ignored the babies and the children that have been massacred and mutilated and maimed and lost legs and limbs and eyes because of the missiles that are being fired at them by the terrorists that you are funding and supplying with grad missiles and other forms of killing will, will missiles you, will you that have agree been with me? against 75% of Aleppo civilians for the last four years, you are marginalizing the majority of the Syrian people. Will you and it is agree your country with that me, is not allowed will you to agree solve with this me conflict. That whoever is proven, who, will you agree with me, just give a yes, I dare you, that whoever is proven to have bombed innocent civilians, whoever they are, should be prosecuted for war crimes, whoever it is. Will you agree with me? Yes, they should be. Absolutely. Whoever it is. But will, will the United yes? States be prosecuted for ah, supplying the bombs, the, Lord, the it cluster took me bombs six times that to are get massacring to that. Yemeni civilians? Well done, Brent. You've got your agreement there. Well, there I said it already. It's just you're too busy to spreading be... propaganda to hear me. And the question is, will we ever find out who committed those atrocities? Again, information thin on the ground. As Brent said, we'll get to speak to the people there. And that is something we will have to wait for. I'd like to come to Daniel uh, uh, one more time, because I'd just like to ask again about interference, because uh, Brent's talked about how um, Assad would have just murdered everybody in his own country and he would have been a despot with nobody in it. Um, but would things have been any worse if there hadn't been this outside interference? How damaging has that been? What do you think we would have seen without the influence of the US and then the response coming from, from Russia? Well, unfortunately, Brent is, is so ill-informed about Syria, it's almost a waste of time to have him talk about this. He's repeating sort of bumper sticker things. But the reality is he did bring up the issue of international law, and that is very important. Uh, Russia and is, for, for all accounts, operating under international law. It was invited by the legal government of Syria as an ally to help put down uh, an insurrection. The United States, on the other hand, is in Syria illegally under international law. This is objectively true. It was not invited into Syria. There is no UN Security Council resolution providing for the U.S. to be operating as a military in Syria. The U.S. flouts international law when it wishes to do so. And as our mainstream media friend would say, it grasps and puts forth international law when it suits its interventionist neocon foreign policy purposes. We see it laid bare here. In terms of what's happening on the ground, it's quite concerning, I think. We live in this modern age of high technology, so many international media organizations. We should be able to get a better picture than we've ever seen of anything that's happening on, on a global scale. Uh, Alexei, and, and yet it seems like the opposite's happening. We're getting very little and different channels are portraying things very differently. Why why are the channels not agreeing and why are they not using channels not using all the sources of information that are available to them? Well, I think that uh, these are the lessons to be learned from the coverage of, uh, um, of the Syrian situation, of the Syrian crisis. You know, first of all, you got to be on the ground to report it correctly. Which and, most channels are. Well, which most channels are and which we... Why uh, is that? Well, uh, uh, they might have their own political agenda. They might be afraid of the people that they're claiming to be uh, the moderate opposition. Uh, they might have other uh, uh, considerations. I, I, I don't know, but uh, uh, it is important that you know we we give uh, we give a voice to all sounds uh, to all sides of the story, uh, which uh, we're not seeing uh, happening with uh, with the mainstream media. Unfortunately, they totally ignore. Uh, you know, the, the obvious facts. They can't even say or acknowledge the fact that, you know, there are people dancing in a street, you know, as, as, as innocuous and uh, as simple as that. Well, another big issue is the fact that Aleppo was basically split into two halves and there was only reporting of one side, depending on what channel you watch. Absolutely. So uh, that's why I'm saying that uh, it is very important to to be able to be on the ground and report uh, the actual news, talk to the actual people, not to rely on some, uh, you know, uh, uh, some 
organizations that are based elsewhere, you know, across uh, across the sea. Uh, it's important to be on the ground and report the actual the actual facts. And, and perhaps this is where I would suggest this is where uh, news organizations sort of stand or fall on their reputation as, as whether they've got people at the heart of a story. I'd like to come back to you, Vanessa, because you've, you've been there uh, and you've seen things for yourself, which adds credibility. Have you come across this so-called fake news? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the majority of the propaganda, particularly in East Aleppo, has been coming from two major sources. Um, one from, as I said, the Aleppo Media Center, which is a French Foreign Office funded. We know um, for a fact that the French government has invested and declared, publicly declared interest in regime change in Syria. So it's hardly um, an unbiased an impartial organization producing news from inside East Aleppo. The second organization, of course, is the famous White Helmet. Now, the White Helmets are multi-million dollar funded so-called first responders embedded in ISIS and al-Nusra areas, so in terrorist-held areas. Um, they are funded by countries like the United States, like the UK, who's a primary funder, who, again, have a vested and declared interest in regime change. Much of their propaganda has been um, proven, verified as fake, um, and they are always on the scene to produce the propaganda, of course, to, to facilitate the calls in the past for a no-fly zone, which we know is, is, is basically tantamount to declaring war with Russia and Syria on Syrian soil. So the, basically what we're seeing, and I saw today when I was at Jibrin, which was the, um, the holding center, if you like, for the, for the civilians that had been um, liberated from the terrorist-held areas, um, we saw no international media, nobody. We saw no international human rights organizations, no representatives of the UN. Where are they? You know, where, where, where are these sources? They're relying upon sources that have very questionable roots that are not really Syrian. Most of them were created inside Turkey and Gaziantep and then infiltrated into East Aleppo to produce the propaganda. So their sources are unreliable and questionable. Their, their, their individual sources are definitely not credible, and yet they don't have any media people on the ground. They don't have any human rights people on the ground in East Aleppo. There's no difficulty in getting into East Aleppo. Um, I got in very easily as an independent journalist on my own with the protection of the Syrian Arab army in the terrorist or the previously terrorist, terrorist held areas. And one question I will ask, why would the Syrian Arab army, who is the Syrian people, there is not one Syrian family that does not have a member of their family in the Syrian Arab army. Why would they liberate these people and then mow them down or execute them? I mean, this, this defies logic. I watched Syrian Arab armies carry children downstairs, help old ladies with the, with the remnants of their belongings because the terrorists had completely destroyed and decimated their homes. Um, these people had family, these soldiers had family in East Aleppo. Many of them had not seen them for the five years of the um, occupation by the various militant factions. Those who are mowing down civilians trying to escape are the terrorist factions. We had multiple testimonies, all of which I have recorded. So as I say, I was on the ground. I was speaking to the people there. I am relaying their testimonies. That should not be ignored. We've you got just the 30 seconds left. Uh, sorry the to Syrian voices you, Vanessa. that you say that you're defending. We've only got 30 seconds left. I'd like to give it to Brent Badovsky. Just have the final say. Go ahead, Brent. Sure. On behalf of 500,000 dead Syrians, far too many of them women and children and babies, far too many of them killed by the massive and deliberate bombing of civilians, I look forward, if nothing else, the United to the war States crimes, has their allowing everybody to present their evidence. You can testify, Vanessa, and I look forward to your testimony and everyone else. I will. God I will. save the people of Syria from I'll people who justify their murder. A very frank conversation. Sure I'd like will. to thank all of you I for participating. I I'd like to thank our guests, starting on the left there, Brent Badovsky, columnist for The Hill, alongside him, Daniel McAdams, executive director of the Ron Paul Institute. We also heard Vanessa Bealey, independent journalist who was on the ground uh, very often there in Syria, and alongside me, Alexei Kuznetsov, deputy head of news here at RT International. Thank you to all of you. A pleasure to have your company.
Meanwhile, staying on the topic, Bashar al-Assad has spoken exclusively to us here at RT, a credible source. The Syrian president sat down with Maria Finoshina. The fighting in Aleppo is perhaps the fiercest fighting in almost six years.